Welcome. We are in the GUI. You have finally made it. I know this has been a long time coming, but we have made it to the Cisco Unified Communications Manager Web-Based Administration Interface, also known as the GUI. Or, uh, you know, for those of you who've been around Call Manager a while, CCM Admin. It's really where we're going to start the tour here. You know, Cisco Unified Communications Manager, Call Manager, whatever you want to call it, you know, is the core um, you know, the foundation of all of the Cisco Unified Communication Solutions. You know, it's, it's kind of the head of the snake, if you will. And getting familiar with the interface is very important. You're going to spend a lot of time in this application as part of your uh, Unified Communications career and, and doing your certification. And it's kind of interesting. You know, when I first got started with Call Manager, you know, as I mentioned before, I had a bit of an aversion to voice and you know, the whole concept of a web GUI, you know, kind of turned me off. I was a router guy. I'm used to, you know, doing router switch config, and here I am having to play around on a web page. But I promise you, the, uh, the CCM admin page, the whole interface, you know, really is, uh, you know, quite nice. Things are organized well, and uh, a lot of capabilities here in front of you. So let's take you on a quick tour and introduce to you some of the basic, um, uh, you know, areas in the GUI that you may want to go to and, and just kind of give you, you know, the thousand foot view of things. We're not going to get into doing any actual configuration in this video. This is really just a get your feet wet kind of tour. So without further ado, let's introduce you to Call Manager Admin. So first off, if you take a look at my web browser here, there's a lot of stuff in here we don't need. Um, Cisco likes to redirect you a lot. So I'm going to put in just HTTP to the IP address of my server, and I'm going to be greeted, greeted with the installed applications page. Now, depending on what version of Call Manager you're on, this behavior might vary slightly. This is an 8.6, I want to say it's 8.6.2 uh, server that I'm on now. Um, 9 is out, 10 is in beta right now, so you're going to be seeing a lot newer things in the field. But uh, 8.6 has been around a while, and it's, it's kind of one of the staple versions, so I thought I would um, take you through it on 8.6. And keep in mind, you know, again, depending what version you're on, this may vary slightly. So on this machine, I've simply got Unified Communications Manager installed, so I'll click it, and I'm taken to the login screen. Now you'll notice it's done a bunch of redirecting up here to me, but just keep in mind, slash CCM admin, um, you can certainly get there by typing that in as well. But this is the CCM admin interface. I'm going to log in as the platform administrator, or what I'll call the application administrator, really, is what I should say. The platform administrator is something, uh, something different, so I'll avoid that term. But the application administrator, this is a local account on the box. And depending on whether or not your LDAP integrated or whether you're just running local accounts, you know, this, this might also be an Active Directory account. But in my case, um, actually, I don't know whether I've got LDAP on or off at the moment. Um, you know, as I mock various things up, that changes. But uh, we'll uh, go ahead and assume it's a local account for now. Um, Administrator is what I'm going to use. And Cisco Systems, I love using the default passwords, uh, or the easy-to-remember passwords. Uh, you do get to choose that as part of the installation. So, All right, so Unified Communications Manager Administration. Basically, when we log in, it takes us to the Help About page, and that's that's what you're looking at here. And it shows us that we're on 8.6.2.20.000-2. So that is 8.6.2a. And you can see this this particular machine, this is a lab environment, although uh, this is production okay uh, as well these days. We're running on VMware. And, uh, you know, ignore all the specs here because they may or may not, um, you know, match what you're going to see in your production environments. So, you know, basic help about, nothing fancy here. Let me take you through the menus and show you kind of what's here, and then we'll jump into the OS administration part of Call Manager and show you that as well. So under the System tab, you know, you've got your system level settings, you know, Server, Unified Communications Managers, CM Groups, which is just a group of Call Managers. You know, when we start talking about uh, registration and fallback and primary and secondary servers, etc., that's all CM Group stuff. We've got phone NTP references for when we're using SIP phones, date time groups, presence groups, regions, device pools, device mobility, which there's some submenus under there. DHCP, if we want to be uh, using Call Manager as our DHCP server, which you can do. It's not real common, but you can do it. We've got all of our LDAP configuration stuff. Um, locations and physical locations, survivable remote site telephony, 
we've got our multi-layer precedent stuff for uh, you know, call prioritization. Enterprise parameters and phone configuration. We've got our service parameters. You've got your security options, which we'll get into when we start talking about things like zip trunks. You've got application server definitions, licensing related items. And this will change if you're on 9 because uh, we're using something called Elm, or the Enterprise License Manager in 9. So you can see that this is an 8 machine, as well as our geolocation stuff. Now, under the call routing menu, we've got our call routing fundamentals, our alternate access routing, our AAR groups, all of our dial rules, route filters, route lists, groups, patterns, etc. You know, you're going to spend a lot of time in here when you're building dial plan. We've got intercom route partition configurations, all of our class of control, which includes things like our calling search spaces. Uh, client matter codes and forced auth codes, um, translation patterns, call park, directed call park, pickup groups. So we're getting into a lot of the features and functionality here. We can look up directory numbers, meet me numbers for conferencing, um, you know, dial plane installers, route plane reports, transformation patterns and profiles, a bunch of mobility settings, um, you know, call control discovery, um, you know, kind of your, your call routing, how do I get where I'm going kind of stuff is right there in that menu. Media resources, this is where we're going to configure things like conference bridges and transcoders and enunciators and all of those voice, you know, media related services. And I'm not going to read them all to you, but they're all kind of grouped together here. If we get under advanced features, this is where we do our voicemail integration. We do things like SAF. And uh, we'll talk more about SAF just, you know, at a high level. It's not a big CCNA voice topic, but we will get into to SAF just at a high level so you know what it is. EMCC and cluster views and fallback and VPN and, you know, some called party tracing. So some pretty cool bells and whistles there and advanced features. The menu you'll probably use the most is device. So this is where I'm going to look for gateways and configure gateways and configure phones and, you know, remote destinations and, you know, you know all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, firmware for the device settings and, and all that kind of stuff. The application menu, there's not a whole lot here, but the, the key piece here I want you to know about is plugins. In fact, I'm going to click plugins and show you here. We can hit the find button. And this is going to show us all of the plugins that are available for us to download from the server to the workstation that we're running on. You know, we're going to have things like, um, you know, the real-time monitor tool, and, and I apologize, my server is taking its time tonight, but we'll have uh, the real-time monitor tool, you know, CTL clients for certificate trust list, you know, the Axle toolkit, the JTAPI stuff, um, you know, a tenant console, which is, uh, you know, something you may or may not cross paths with, TAPS, so anyway, those are plugins um, that we hide under applications. User management. This is where we get into user-based configuration. Your application users and your end users and all the, the role-based access control that we're going to talk about. And uh, then we've got bulk administration. And this is only going to show up if you're on the publisher, by the way, because bulk administration doesn't run on the subscriber. Um, this is where we can do a bunch of different, you know, like it sounds, bulk admin. So I can bulk import, you know, tens of thousands of phones or, you know, make modifications to large groups of users. And, and really, you know, anything you do, you know, in large quantity is going to happen as part of, of part of BAT in the bulk administration toolkit. And then you've got the help menu. And I want to show you something cool about the help menu. There's something called this page. So let me go somewhere. I'm just going to randomly go into a menu. Here's a phone. So I'm in the configuration for a phone. I'm going to say help this page. And what's going to happen is the Cisco online help is going to load and it's going to give me information about things I can do, you know, in the area I'm in. So tips about resetting a phone, tips about deleting phones. It's going to talk to me about each of the configuration settings and give me a description of what these settings actually mean and you know tell me about some of the default values you know so device name enter a name to, d to define the device it can contain you know this number of characters and etc so you know really cool the help um this page menu is very very valuable so this is the basic ccm admin interface page now i'm going to show you a couple of other places here cisco unified serviceability is the next section that i'm going to show you Serviceability is used for, 
system-based services. So when you think of um, you know things like activating services, restarting services, you know, um, application layer stuff, not so much uh, you know moves, adds, changes type of stuff. You're going to do in serviceability. So let's give you a quick tour of serviceability. We can do alarm configurations for various alarm scenarios. We can configure our trace levels for the system. So when we're capturing logs, we can get into that. We've got service activation and, and feature services for you know network services, and, and we can control and stop and start and restart and all that good stuff. You know, service activation will activate them and deactivate them. Um, you know, we can get into call detail reporting and, and dialed number analyzer. We can do our SNMP-based configuration for uh, setting your network management platform up to interface with the uh, Cisco Call Manager. We've got call home configuration, and then again, we've got the famous help with the this page. We like the this page option. So that's unified serviceability. Um, you'll be in there you know, every once in a while, but not near as often as you'll be inside of uh, CCM Admin, which was the first place that we went. The OS administration, in fact, this is going to ask me for a different username and password because this is the platform administrator account, which I'm using the same thing for, administrator Cisco systems. And this is where we do things like show, you know, show platform, you know, type stuff. So hardware and network settings and software and, you know, tell me about my cluster. We can go to the settings menu. The, you know, this is where you configure IP addresses and your NTP servers and, you know, time and, and under version, it sounds really confusing, but this is where you go to actually tell the server that you want to reboot or shut down. You know, I know they've hidden that quite well. You've got your security menu, which is where all your certificate stuff happens. You can do software upgrades or minor releases through this. You know, we'll do it via TFTP. I'm sorry, not TFTP. Um, we'll do it through, uh, you know, SFTP. And, uh, you know, we can, can do management of our TFTP files. So, you know, maybe there's phone loads that are out in the TFTP server and we want to look at what's there and do some stuff with it. We can do that from OS administration. We've got a couple of things here. Remote support. This can be used for TAC if they want to get into your system. You can grant them some access. So you do that from OS administration. And once again, help about this page is, uh, you know, very, very useful information. So let's, let's take a peek at that one real quick. For this page... Um, you know, switch versions and restart. So how to do a reboot or a shutdown, etc. You know, restart current version, shut down the server, etc. So good stuff, good stuff. And uh, one more thing I want to show you. Actually, two more things I want to show you. There's DRS, which is the disaster recovery system. And DRS is what it sounds like. This is where I go to configure and run my backups. So I can configure my backup devices and my schedule and look at the backup history. And, and the same thing for the restore, you know, run through the restore wizard. So DRS is all about backups. And one more place to take you here is unified reporting. And uh, this, I believe, is going to want the application administrator again. So administrator, Cisco systems. All right. There are various system reports you can run. And to be honest, I don't use this very often, um, not because it's not useful, but because I come from, you know, older versions of Call Manager, <laughs> you know, and this came later. So it's, it's one of those tools that's there that I don't leverage probably as much as I should. But, you know, you can go in here and run various reports, you know, and it generates them, you know, on demand. So I just said run a system report, and this will probably take way too long to run because I'm not on the fastest hardware here. But, uh, you know, there's all kinds of device summaries and you know phone and feature lists and extension lists and you know uh, you know phone load type reports and, and you can just get all kinds of uh, really good data uh, out of things here so anyway um, these are the main interfaces that you're going to use as part of your unified communications manager experience so i wanted to give you a quick little tour in videos coming up we're going to start going through the uh, cisco unified communications manager application mainly ccm admin and we'll start talking about how to do basic provisioning. So how do I create a phone? How do I add a user? How do I do the normal moves, ads, changes type of activities that you are going to be expected to be able to do as part of the CCNA voice? And we'll get into more, you know, more in-depth call manager knowledge. Um, keep in mind, this is not specifically a call manager class. You know, we're teaching you the general high-level stuff as part of the CCNA voice. There are, you know, separate training sessions dedicated to just the call manager administration 
um, you know, the application call manager, there are classes dedicated to just Unity Connection and dedicated to all the other pieces and parts. So you're not going to get everything you need to know to build a system out of this, but we do want to give you the high level day-to-day um, -day type of admin uh, exposure. So with that, I'm going to say thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys soon in the next video. And uh, happy studying, and we'll talk to you soon.